Colorado Springs. Nearly 500,000 people. Olympic City, USA. Garden of the Gods. Pikes Peak. It's a growing city. Our local government has a lot of employees. What exactly do they do? How does it impact my life? This is where you find out. Behind the Springs, an inside look at your local government. Hey, we realize it's been a while since we've had Colorado Springs Mayor John Southers on our podcast. And so, Mayor, um, it's a good time to check in as we're off and running in this new year. Thanks for being with me. Hard to believe uh, another year's gone and another one's here. It's gone by a little fast, and it's been a strange one for sure. Yes. Very strange. Yes. So we're hoping for bigger and better things this year, and we'll get some of your talk about some of your goals and um, ideas about this new year. But I, I want to start with COVID, if you don't mind, and the pandemic and some of the news out there about vaccine distribution. Maybe we can start by talking about what our, our latest status is in that respect. Well, let's talk about COVID itself. Uh, the good news is, you know, we had a huge spike in the in the fall. Yes. In late winter. Uh, and the good news is that has really tapered off uh, dramatically. Uh, a lot of cooperation from our citizens. Uh, you know, we've moved to the point where we've got our restaurants open. We've actually gotten to 50 percent uh, capacity. And some of the larger ones are able to take advantage of something called a five-star program to get uh, more uh, capacity, and the numbers are, uh, are trending in the right direction, particularly the very important numbers, hospitalizations. Uh, that has gone down dramatically uh, in the new year, and we feel very good about that. So the big challenge now is to get everybody vaccinated, and uh, obviously we're subject to how much is available from the federal government coming to the state of Colorado, and then how much the state of Colorado distributes to the respective counties. Um, there's been a little, you know, there's been a little up and down in the sense that it became apparent to us uh, after a couple of weeks that Colorado, uh, El Paso County was not getting 12 and percent of the vaccinations, which would be our uh, pr proportionate share population wise. Uh, the state, uh, to their credit, has acknowledged that. And for example, uh, this week uh, is really uh, come up with another 20 some thousand uh, doses over and above our regular allotment of about uh, 9,000 doses. So we're, we're going to make up for that deficit very quickly. Uh, we have a, a basically a task force that the health department runs. We have a meeting every Wednesday that all the providers of vac uh, vaccines, and th those are the major hospitals, uh, Peak Vista, uh, major clinics like Matthews View and Optum. Uh, it includes... Uh, 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 King Supers, Safeway, uh, and now some pharmacies coming on, Walmart, and uh, uh, I, I mentioned King Supers. Uh, after a while, uh, we'll also have Walgreens and uh, CVS getting uh, direct allocations from uh, the, uh, the federal government. And then, of course, locally, uh, DOD is supplying our military bases for purposes of vaccinating active duty and uh, uh, family members. So that comes from Department of Defense. I That's didn't right. realize. Yeah, okay. but it, this is an all very complex thing, but right. we, we're staying on top of it, and uh, I feel pretty good about the fact that uh, we now have a way of, uh, you know, contacting people that are in hospital or clinic databases, but also setting up events that uh, people can sign up for with a phone call uh, or a drive up, and we're going to have what are called some pop-up events where you just show up and if you're in the appropriate age category, you will get uh, a vaccine. And it's great you bring up all the providers because we haven't had quite as many of those, you know, high profile, large event vaccinations, although we're going to have a few. Um, but a lot of these things are happening, you know, by appointment only, but hundreds, if not thousands of doses are being administered. It's just not out in the open, yeah, so to speak. Yeah, we've administered about uh, 73,000, 75,000 uh, doses, and that's going to pick up uh, exponentially now. Uh, but, for example, uh, uh, February 13th, 14th is a, uh, a 5,000 mass distribution event at the World Arena. Mm -hmm. uh, last weekend we had one at uh, Matthews View and Peak Vista, and you're going to see a lot of those. I think the uh, 20th and 21st we're going to have one in the southeast um, uh, where, you know, uh, but we, we would prefer people actually pick up the phone and, you know, get a time and everything because it certainly helps us regulate the flow of people. 
Correct. And we had Dr. Johnson on our last episode, but for those people who maybe didn't listen to that, El Paso County Health.org, or you can call 211 to get more information about the vaccine. Are you going to receive the vaccine? Yes. Okay. That just hasn't happened yet. Uh, it has happened. Oh, it has. I okay. Have. Yes, okay. It has happened. Okay. Good to know. You're vaccinated. So definitely something we encourage folks to do and find out the, the correct information and where to go. Um, so I know our community's recovery is top priority. Um, any other things you're focused on right now or, or what all does that involve in terms of economic recovery? Well, the good news is that uh, the city has, uh, I think, proven itself among, if not the most uh, economic resilient large city in America. Uh, we had serious shortfalls in revenue in uh, March and April, 14% uh, in March, 23% in April, and we were preparing for the worst. You know, we were modeling for 30% revenue losses, you know, 110, 120 million. Uh, but Jen, the, uh, the city, you know, we had a tremendous amount of construction going on, which continued unabated, both residential uh, and commercial has taken place at uh, record levels. All those people buying new homes or furnishing those new homes or uh, getting landscaping. Uh, online purchases have been off the charts. Uh, it appears that people uh, are actually buying more, staying home, spending more time online, buying things and stuff like that. And so we've benefited tremendously from that. And so despite the fact that uh, tourism's down 40% for the year, we actually finished the year in general fund sales and use tax up 0.45 over 2019. That's amazing. Now, we will probably have a total revenue shortfall of about 10 to 12 million because of like lodging and rental taxes way down, things like that. But the voters helped us out in November with 2A. We don't have to ratchet down uh, to that new uh, lower level of revenue going into uh, uh, 2021. So unless you know, we have some kind of a unforeseen Surge setback or, yeah. uh, with uh, mutated viruses and things like that. Uh, 20, 2021 looks pretty, uh, uh, you know, uh, pretty healthy. And if we can, you know, get these vaccines uh, to the point where we're back to normal by this summer and have a, a normal tourist season, it could be a great year for us. Yes, that is the key to try to get things back to normal for summer. Um so what are some other goals that you want to look at? And, and in terms of development, you know, we saw the museum, we saw that the new bridge, we've seen so much redevelopment downtown. What other projects are coming up that people can get excited about in 2021? Well, there's a lot of really exciting ones. Uh, uh, people that uh, drive down Cimarron into the city will see the Widener Stadium. Uh, every day I go by and being a sports fan, I get pretty excited about it. Uh, and you can see now, uh, get a sense that we're going to have a... Uh, an amenity, if you will, uh, uh, a design sculptor. Uh, I won't tell you all about the details. That's. Uh, I think it's going to be the, the place where everybody goes in downtown Cower Springs to have their picture taken. Oh, uh, great. It's, it's really uh, quite something, and you can just see that starting to uh, come up now. The stadium will uh, be ready for the switchback season in May. Uh, we've already booked uh, other events, including the uh, NCAA Division II Soccer Championship in December. Uh, uh, so that's very exciting. Uh, CC Arena, Robeson Arena, is going to be ready for next year's uh, hockey season at CC. That's going to be a great facility. Uh, we've got uh, the uh, uh, Shield Sporting Goods coming on in uh, April. If you've never been to one, it's a combination of a great sporting goods store on an indoor amusement park. That's what I've heard. I have not been yeah, to one. I'm excited uh, to see it. It's, you know, aquariums and Ferris wheels and all that sort of thing. Uh, you've got the Ent uh, headquarters building uh, coming up this year. Um, you know, it's all... We haven't been slowed down very no. much. No. It's uh, amazing. There, there, there's still hour-long lines at In-N-Out in in out Yes, <laughs> that's right. Uh, I love hamburgers, but not that much. Right. I'm going to wait till the line gets a little, <laughs> a little shorter. That's uh, right. But really, a lot of exciting things happening across the city. It's oh, not just centralized yeah, to downtown. Know, uh, There's a lot of redevelopment. complexes downtown, all around the city, uh, new hotels. Uh, it's, it's really been fascinating to watch. And, uh, you know, I know people have reservations about growth, but the fact of the matter is, uh, I figured out, and the fact you either grow or you're stagnant. Mm -hmm. uh, as I think I've said on this podcast before, 
just to meet the demands of kids graduating from high school or college in Colorado Springs that want to stay in Colorado Springs, we need to create uh, 53, 5,500 uh, jobs a year, and that means growth. That's right. And responsible growth. So yeah, that's the key. You, you have to carefully plan it. That's make the key. Make sure you got the water. Make sure you got the infrastructure. So um, l speaking of some other fun things coming up, let's talk about the city's sesquicentennial or 150th anniversary, if you don't want to say that word. Um, and I know that you did have a chance to go by the new COS at 150 exhibit, which kind of kicks off our um, different activities that we're having throughout the year to celebrate the anniversary. What do you think of the exhibit? Well, I love the exhibit. Uh, having lived here all my life, uh, uh, I, uh, I I think I probably identified with some of the exhibits that uh, newcomers couldn't. For example, uh, the Pikes Peak Community College, which is actually El Paso Community College at the time, Aardvark basketball uniform. A lot of people oh. don't realize that when El Paso Aardvarks. Community College started, it had a basketball team. No. And there's a uniform there. Um, there's some fascinating exhibits. Uh you know, Hewlett-Packard was such a big part of the history of this town, and uh, they make uh, oscilloscopes. And there's an oscilloscope that uh, Hewlett-Packard uh, produced. Uh, there's the death mask of uh, uh, Stratton. Uh, there's, uh, you know, just a whole bunch. There's a fabulous portrait of uh, William J. Palmer when you first uh, uh, come in. I just thought it was a, a really fun exhibit. They have uh, cars from the old Manitou Springs incline and things like that. I just loved it. Uh, I got to kick off the sesquicentennial year, and I, having been a, a Latin student in high school, I have no hesitation to talk Latin and talk about sesquicentennial and things like that. Uh, but uh, I kicked off the year with the firework display on top of uh, Pikes Peak. Uh, uh, beginning March 1st, I'm going to start growing a beard. That could be a really ugly event. We're going to document that on social uh, media. That's what I, I understand. My wife is not the least bit excited about this, <laughs> uh, but I promised I would, and I'm going to give it a shot. So if people want, if people are not aware, we're going to do a little thing called beards and bonnets. So if you want to grow a beard or wear a bonnet, uh, make a bonnet or both, or neither, but just to get involved in some way, we do have a lot of information on our website. That's coloradosprings.com. Yeah, we're going to have a big event uh, at uh, White House Ranch in June where we're going to have a beard contest. I'll finish dead last. Uh, <laughs> we're going to have a ba uh, bonnet uh, contest. We're going to have a, uh, you know, the brew uh, masters around town are going to Yes, are going to contribute. Things like that. And it's all going to culminate, uh, culminate with a big downtown party on uh, July 31st in which, um, as I like to say, we're going to party like it's 1871. We'll see what that looks like. Yeah. <laughs> That'll be really fun. So, um, you know, a lot of fun and exciting activities planned, but, you know, and you've talked about this before, but it really is important to look back at some of our history as, as you and I were talking at the beginning of planning for our future, even as we plan for growth. It's incredible as you go through that exhibit to see the then and now photos that are on display, very large photos of what our downtown area, for example, look like, or just the base of Pikes Peak and how different it is 150 years later. So the key really is, um, and, and I think the museum and everyone wants to hear from our residents on, you know, what do the next 150 years look like? Well, what's so exciting about, and, and one of the reasons why you want to observe a, uh, a significant occasion like this is number one, reflect on your history, celebrate it. A lot of good things have happened and a lot of uh, people have played instrumental roles in our city being what it is today, you know, you think about William Palmer, you think about Spencer Penrose, uh, Winfield Scott Stratton, all, you know, all these folks. Uh, but it's also uh, an opportunity to say, okay, through the hard work of all these people and all these citizens through the years, this is where we are, where we want to go. And uh, it's a good time to reflect and think about uh, what the city's going to look like uh, in the future. And uh, I think it's a very healthy part of this whole observance. Speaking of, of your particular future as mayor, what do you see as some of those big things you'd like to see accomplished before the end of your term? Well, uh, I've been very fortunate. We've accomplished, you know, uh, I ran for mayor saying, number one, I'm going to fix the infrastructure. We had a billion and a half dollar infrastructure deficit. And uh, Jen, it's amazing that I can sit here uh, six years later and say uh, we've pretty much overcome that infrastructure deficit with our latest settlement of our stormwater 
uh, legal issues. Uh, you know, we're fixing our roads, we're fixing our stormwater. Uh, that's been mind-boggling to me that we've been able to do it as quickly as we have. Job creation was the other thing I was after. Uh, despite the COVID hiccup, uh, that's been on an almost relentless uh, path since 2015. Uh, before COVID, we were creating about 8,000 jobs a year. I have every reason to believe that's going to quickly pick up uh, again. And then the other thing that I'm very proud of is that, uh, you know, I was going to work very hard on uh, a much more collaborative relationship between the mayor, the city council, the city of Cower Springs, and other governmental entities. And I think we've accomplished that. Uh, so a lot of my last two years are kind of uh, uh, watching some of these things come to fruition, like the City for Champions projects. Tremendous amount of hard work has uh, uh, been put in, and it's going to be just fun to see these things uh, come online. Obviously, things we continue to need to work on, affordable housing, uh, you know, uh, how to deal with the homeless issues, uh, infrastructure, uh, as I think I've said on this program before, I'm very happy about the level of commitment that our local citizens, citizens are making. I am not happy at this point in time about the commitment that the state is making to infrastructure. Uh, Powers Boulevard is a state highway. Uh, we've got to expand Highway US 24 east and west. We've got to expand uh, Highway 94 out to Shriver Air Force Base. We need the state uh, to get serious about infrastructure investment also. And that's a battle that's been going on your whole your whole time. Yeah, it has. And uh, uh, a lot of talk about it, uh, but nothing's happened yet uh, in terms of a major investment by the state in critical public infrastructure. So that would be wonderful to see. Yeah. Another thing we forgot to mention when we were talking about big projects is the Pikes Peak Summit Complex, which is opening in the, the spring. Yeah. yeah, spring, summer, uh, I guess. We're going to have a kind of a blowout celebration uh, for the new Summit House and the renovated uh, Cog Railway at the same time. And wonderful. think about that. You know, the Cog uh, Railway is 125 or some years old. Uh, investment of Spencer Penrose, as was the road up uh, Pikes Peak. Uh, you really can't talk about Cairo Springs without talking about Pikes Peak. They're really uh, virtually synonymous. There's a reason why we call this the Pikes Peak region. Uh, and the history is fabulous. Uh, you know, uh, when, the, when gold was discovered in 1859, uh, just uh, around Denver, the slogan wasn't Denver bust, it was Pikes Peak or bust, because that was the first thing those settlers saw uh, when they were coming across the Great Plains. Uh, we've, uh, you know, one of the most patriotic and iconic uh, songs that we Americans take pride in was written because of Pikes Peak, America the Beautiful. Uh, now the second oldest uh, car race in America takes place on that mountain. One of the great... Uh, a foot races uh, in the United States takes place on that mountain. Uh, and it's, uh, it's just a huge part of our history, and it's going to be fun as part, you know, the same year as the sesquicentennial celebration, yes. to say finally, after all these years, thanks to technology, we're able to build a, uh, a summit house that reflects the, the, the grandeur of this uh, mountain and isn't quite the... Uh, bunker that right. the uh, other ones were, where you just go in and get yourself a donut. and You can still go in and get yourself a donut, but you'll get a lot more than that. That's exactly right. You can have yes. exhibits. You're going to have... Oh, uh, amazing views. Amazing views. And accessibility. That's right. Yeah. I that's mean, that's right. the key. Anyone can experience it. So if you're one of those folks who've, who's lived here a long time or you're new and hasn't had the chance to go up, you know, this is going to be the year to do it. It is very much going to be the year to do it by train, by, uh, uh, by car. Uh, it's going to be... Uh, I'm, I'm very, very excited about it. A lot of positive going on. Well, we know there are a lot of challenges, but thanks for sharing your views on both. Really uh, appreciate thanks. you. Always glad to talk to you, Jen. I appreciate you being here. And thanks so much, everyone, for tuning in, whether it's on Facebook or on our podcast platforms to Behind the Springs. Thanks so much. Mm -hmm.